everyone, I'm Dr. Murphy. I teach chemistry at the university. Call me Kristen. I study the elements, molecules, atoms, all the really small stuff that make up our Earth, the universe, and even you and me. In our show today, we're going to explore where all these tiny atoms come from. And we're going to start in a kitchen. The great astronomer Carl Sagan once said, if you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. Everything in this kitchen, the oven, pots, pans, cabinet, counter, even our cooks here, smile. All of it, all matter on Earth came from either the blistering inferno at the heart of a star, or a titanic stellar explosion, a supernova. Or the unfathomable start of the universe. The Big Bang. Every molecule, every compound in this apple pie, every element on the periodic table came from beyond the Earth a long, a very long time ago. Let's explore the cosmic recipe with Io, our little computer tablet here. Hello, I am Io. What recipe file would you like to access first? Let's see. I have an appetite for setting the periodic table. Coming right up. <laughs> the periodic table is a list of everything there is. OK, light is not on it. Photons don't have any mass. Not sure if awesome sauce is on the table either. <laughs> Silly idioms. Moving on. We don't have time to explore each element here, but maybe hmm. the element song. Love this. Pressing play. There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, lutetium, vanadium, and lanthanum, and osmium, and astatine, and radium, and gold, protactinium, and indium, and gallium, and iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium. There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, and boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. There's holmium and helium and hafnium and erbium and phosphorus and francium and fluorine and terbium and manganese and mercury, molybdenum and magnesium, dysprosium and scandium and cerium and cesium and lead, praseodymium and platinum and plutonium, palladium, promethium, potassium, polonium and tantalum, technetium, titanium, tellurium and cadmium and calcium and chromium and curium. There's sulfur, californium, and fermium, berkelium, and also mendelevium, einsteinium, nobelium, and argon, krypton, neon, radon, xenon, zinc, and rhodium, and chlorine, carbon, cobalt, copper, tungsten, tin, and sodium. These are the only ones of which the news has come to Harvard. And there may be many others, but they haven't been discovered. That was Tom Lehrer, mathematician and songwriter, who came up with that exhausting, entertaining, and educational tune. Thanks, Tom. Yes, go ahead and clap. Hmm, let's click on a little elemental history. Long ago, we go. This familiar picture of the elements was first put together by Russian Dmitry Mendeleev way back in the 1860s. Let's explore the origins of these elements. We will start at the top with elements one through three. What do you think, Io? Logical, always start at the beginning. The universe started 13.8 billion years ago with the Big Bang. At first, the universe was extremely hot and dense. As it expanded, it cooled. After one second, protons and neutrons formed when tiny subatomic particles collided and clumped together. Soon, the first element, 
hydrogen was born. In the next few minutes, helium was created when two hydrogen atoms stuck together. A little lithium also came together. It took a while, hundreds of millions of years, but eventually, stars and galaxies formed. It's hard to grasp sometimes, but all the hydrogen in the sun, in our oceans, lakes and rivers, and in us, all hydrogen came from the very early universe, billions of years ago. And we've only started our story of the elements. Amazing. And that leads us to our next segment. Uh, ferocious? Wait a sec, we'd better access this first. Hidden fingerprints are crucial for comprehending the cosmic recipe. I concur. Excellent selection, Dr. Murphy. Thank you, Io. Today, we can't travel to the stars. Warp drive, hyperdrive, they remain movie imaginations. Our best spaceship would take over a thousand lifetimes just to reach the closest star. How then, how can we figure out what stars are made of when they're so incredibly far away? When you hold a piece of diffraction grating, light scatters into a rainbow of colors, the spectrum. Etched in these glasses are over 10,000 tiny lines that break up the white light. A prism works the same way. It refracts and disperses the light. Each color denotes a different energy of the photons. Astronomers do a very similar thing with their huge telescopes. Instead of looking through an eyepiece, they use a spectroscope. These are very sophisticated prisms that decode the elements that make up the distant stars. Look carefully at these spectral images from a star. The tiny black lines are the hidden fingerprints that reveal the elements. Their thickness and position also act like thermometers telling us the temperature of various stars. Each element on the periodic table has its own special spectral signature. It's the barcode of the universe. Palladium, number 46, is very different than polonium, number 84. Fluorine's fingerprints, number nine, don't look anything like gold's, number 79, and on and on. Now it's time for some ferocious fusion. Fusion, a nuclear idea. Stars are the ultimate alchemists. They are constantly making new atoms in their nuclear furnaces. To explore a little closer, let's look at our own sun. The sun is an average star. It shines more yellow because of its size and temperature, 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit at its surface. At the core, it's a very different story. Temperatures here reach 27 million degrees. The sun's intense gravitational pressure forces 600 million tons of hydrogen to smash together every second to make 596 million tons of helium. The four million tons of missing matter are converted to energy according to Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. Eventually, hydrogen starts to run out, and the sun slowly starts to swell into a red giant star. Our future sun is now fusing three helium atoms into carbon, and one carbon atom will fuse with a helium atom to make oxygen. This intense energy is even more powerful than hydrogen's fusion. This is what causes the sun to mind-bogglingly enlarge, someday to engulf Mercury, Venus, and the Earth. No worries, this doesn't happen until another five billion years. Oh my, wow, thank goodness. Yes, Io. 
Time for the ginormous stars. These behemoths cook up even more elements. Yes, big stellar kitchens, fitting choice. Here in the constellation Orion is a great example of a big stellar kitchen. It's Betelgeuse. Up close, it is a mammoth red giant star. How big is Betelgeuse? Here is the sun compared to this huge mass of incandescent gas, very tiny. Its gravitational onslaught goes beyond fusing hydrogen and helium. It compresses carbon and oxygen into heavier elements. Now neon, and then silicon. Finally, the star develops an unbelievably dense iron core, and fusion stops. Iron can't fuse into anything bigger. It can't push outward. Betelgeuse collapses upon its iron core and rebounds in a colossal, stellar explosion. This is a supernova. This extreme eruption is where the heavy elements are forged. Not by nuclear fusion, though. Instead, neutron capture occurs. Billions upon billions of neutrons soon decay into protons. Two neutron stars, dense cores left from supernovae, can spiral in closer and closer until finally this blistering blast also creates heavy atoms by neutron capture. The heavy atoms we live with every day, like the nickel, copper, zinc, and silver in our coins or the gold in our jewelry, or the neodymium found in computer hard drives, or yttrium in computer screens. In computers like me? Yes, Io, computers like you. A supernova helped build you. And you too? And Kristen too. Time to explore awesome atoms. Here is a model of one atom of oxygen. Eight positive protons in blue, and the eight neutral neutrons in red. The number of protons determines the element. An arsenic nucleus has 33 protons. Krypton, 36. Tin, 50. Tungsten has 74. Most atoms have isotopes, when the atoms have the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons. Isotopes have different physical properties, and sometimes different chemical properties. Oxygen typically has eight tiny negative electrons. Our best model is like they're rapidly moving in a cloud around the nucleus, not like the planets going around the sun. If the electrons are lost or gained, we have an oxygen ion. Atoms are crazy small. so small we can't see them. Think of it this way. There are more atoms in one grain of salt, just one little salt grain, than all the stars in the Milky Way galaxy. There are more atoms in one human body than all the stars in the visible universe. Yes, atoms are fantastically abundant, but even more bizarre, they are mostly empty. If we greatly enlarge our oxygen's proton-neutron nucleus to the size of an orange and place it at midfield in a big stadium, the tiny electrons would be flashing around the rest of the stadium. An atom is over 99.9% empty space. Atoms might be little and barely there, but they're powerful. Our next journey is... Yes, myriad of molecules. Appropriate. Accessing video and audio files now. The most common molecule we know is water. Two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, H2O. Water is essential for us humans as is DNA. 
where the carbon atom is key. While many atoms make up DNA, carbon's electrons share nicely, bonding easily to make a myriad of molecules. Silicon is the second most abundant element in the Earth's crust. In our air and clouds, the most common is oxygen. Silicon and oxygen combine to make sand, quartz, and even computer chips. Magnesium is the rock star element inside this plant cell. It's the main hub for chlorophyll, the molecule that makes our world so green. Magnesium atoms also perform the main role in photosynthesis, where water, carbon dioxide, and light energy make glucose and oxygen, the same oxygen we breathe every day. Check out the cool chemical formula. Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus, these atoms make up 99% of the human body. All are vital for life. Like the iron racing around in our blood, so many elements, all so crucial for life here on Earth. In space, the Moon and Mars contain similar elements. Atoms of oxygen and silicon dominate the rocks. The Moon has a bit more aluminum on its surface. Mars has a bit more iron. That's why it's red or rusty. Both have many of the same elements, as does Earth. At I.O., a moon of Jupiter, the atmosphere is 90% sulfur because of its active volcanoes. Io, Io, that is me. My records show I was named after this moon, or computing a princess lover of Greek god Zeus, or... Oh my, save your memory, Io. I think we're ready for another chapter. Yes, accessing playful. Back in the day, the only place you saw the periodic table was at school. Specifically, a science classroom. Chemistry demos are dazzling and a little scary. Check out this one. Methane mamba. Combustion of methane, CH4, is exothermic. It reacts with oxygen, so look out. Careful! Methane mamba fireballs are always a thrill. Experiments like these can be tons of fun, and they teach us so much about the chemical and physical properties of all the amazing molecules that surround us. Today, the periodic table has gone beyond the classroom. Did you? We find it almost everywhere. You can find the elements on the basketball court. Periodically. Setting the periodic, I mean, kitchen table. In the bathroom? Get out of here! Elements are everywhere curled up on the couch, reading about the elements. Or running late at the office. Oh no, is it lithium o'clock already? Well, Io, that was playful, thank you. Looks like we're almost done. And all that's left is... Cosmic connections. Yes, that is what I have been learning from your files. Io is connected to the cosmos. Io finds that Agreeable. Yes, Io. As Neil deGrasse Tyson said, we are not figuratively, but literally, stardust. All the elements we find on Earth are the same elements we find on planets, and even in faraway stars. Elements are born from the stars, from the Big Bang. 
It's a commanding cosmic connection. All the atoms, all the laws of chemistry and physics work the same way, everywhere. No matter where we explore, hydrogen functions like hydrogen. We must connect the very small with the very large. Studying minuscule atoms can lead to discoveries about mammoth galaxies, and vice versa. We humans sit right between the very small and the very large. We explore both ends, tiny molecules and massive nebulae. The answers we get give us a better understanding, a better cosmic recipe. But we humans are always cooking up something new. Things change. One day, perhaps, we might detect oxygen in the atmosphere of a faraway exoplanet. Oxygen in the air is crucial for many life forms on Earth, especially us. Finding oxygen doesn't mean extraterrestrial life exists, but it's amazing to think that one tiny spectral fingerprint could lead to a giant breakthrough about our place among the stars. Your video file is finishing, Kristen. All folders completed. Anything more? That's it, I.O. Oh, almost forgot. Can you upload and play these end credits? My pleasure. I detected new data on your jump drive. More cosmic recipe files. Can I download them, Kristen? Absolutely, I.O. Absolutely. Thank you for all your help today. There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, lutetium, vanadium, and lanthanum, and osmium, and astatine, and radium, and gold from actinium, and indium, and gallium, and iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium. There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, and boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. There's holmium and helium and hafnium and erbium and phosphorus and francium and fluorine and terbium and manganese and mercanium, molybdenum and magnesium, dysprosium and scandium and cerium and cesium and lead, praseodymium and platinum and plutonium, palladium, promethium, potassium, polonium and tantalum, technetium, titanium, tellurium and cadmium and calcium and chromium and curium. There's sulfur, californium, and fermium, berkelium, and also mendelevium, einsteinium, nobelium, and argon, kryptonium, and radon, xenon, zinc, and rhodium, and chlorine, carbon, cobalt, copper, tungsten, tin, and sodium. These are the only ones of which the news has come to Harvard. <laughs> <laughs>